everyone, my name is Cassie Tanks. I am the Digital Humanities Assistant at San Diego State University's Digital Humanities Center. In this next tutorial, we're going to go over how you can add text to annotate videos and images on screen in your larger Adobe Premiere video projects. In previous tutorials, we've gone over how you can have multiple images and videos on screen. We've also gone over how you can use keyframes to change the position and scale or the size of videos and images and move them around on your screen. As a reminder, there are other Adobe Premiere tutorials that not only give you a tour of the platform, but also introduce you to other basic editing skills. So if you have an opportunity, please check those out. But for now, let's get to adding text to screen. So before we begin, I want to show you what we're going to do. First, I'm going to mute this audio track so that way you don't hear me talking twice. And I want to draw your attention to this final product screen. I'm actually going to enlarge this slightly so you can see it a little bit easier. Now, as a reminder, you can always manipulate and change the size of these windows, which is really handy if you need to look at something. But remember that you can do that because I have thought I've lost a window and all I did was just squish it down too far. So if you can't find something, just start squishing windows around and you might be able to find it. All right, so let's look at the example of what we're going to do today. I went ahead and scrubbed along until right before you see the images pop up on screen. So as you can see in this example, I have added a citation to each of these images. That is just one way that you can use on-screen citations. You can also use it to annotate, to draw attention, to post questions during videos and images. Really, you're only limited by your creativity. So now, let's deconstruct and go through step-by-step -step how to do that. In your project planning, you've already have the images, the text, and the overall lesson plan, or whatever else you are recording your video for, all planned out. So you should also know approximately when you want to add in text and also what you want to say. First thing you want to do is scrub along the timeline to where you want your text to appear. So in this project, since I'm adding citations, I want the citations to pop up on screen at the same time that the images, and I want them to appear on screen for the same duration. So we will start with this one. I'm actually going to pull it down so that way we have a little bit of a better view of it. So now that I have it approximately where I want that text to appear, I am going to click on the type tool. This is going to allow me to add text. So click on that text type tool in this toolbar window. Once you are there, we want to open up the graphics workspace. This graphics workspace will allow us to manipulate and edit the text once we add it on screen. Now, as you can see when I hover over the screen, that the you can you can create a text box. So I'm just going to draw a text box in the approximate place and size I want it to be. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect right now because you can manipulate it. You can either type in what you want on screen or you can just copy and paste what you have. I've done my planning and I have a layout already of all the images and everything I want to use. So I have already typed up my citations and I'm just going to copy and paste that right in there. You can see here that the font is really big and falling out of the text box. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to open up the side panel. So what makes a graphics workspace handy is that it has essential graphics and edit. Make sure the edit panel here is selected. Then as you scroll down in the edit, options in the essential graphics window, you'll see how you can change the alignment, you can change the text, you can change the, the size, if it's bold, italic, the appearance, the color of it, all sorts of options. So I'm actually going to make this window a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. And let's start editing it. I'm just going to select Control A to select all of my text. And you'll know it's selected because it will be in a red highlight. Then we're gonna go here to text. 
If you want to change the font, you can do so here. I'm going to go ahead and just click with, stick with Tahoma, but there's a wide variety of fonts, so dig through it. I also want to keep it regular and I want to keep it aligned to the left. Here is where you can change the text size. There's a couple options. You can either adjust the font size by hovering over it, or you can scrub side to side. Or you can double click that and just type it in. So let's start with 18. Good, that is about where we want it to be. And as you can see here, everything's on screen. Of course, you want to double check everything. So to zoom in on that text, just to make sure everything looks right, we're going to click this zoom level option here in the left bottom part of the final product window. So I'm going to click here. And let's go ahead and zoom into 100%. And I can use these bars to scrub along. I'm looking here. That looks good, but this is a little awkward how it's just kind of like a hanging. So let's adjust that slightly. I went back to my selection tool, and now I can adjust the text box slightly. Ah, uh, that looks much, much better. I can click it, kind of drag it exactly where I want it to be, right about there. The zoom is handy. Also, if you need to italicize something, bold something, whatever you need to do, if you want to make just one color, uh, one word a certain color. So let's say, for example, you want to make Catherine Dunham a different color. I could highlight that, come over here to Central Graphics, scroll down to Fill, and then that will open up a color picker. So let's say I want to make that a nice, kind of like a light red peachy color. I can do that. And of course, if you do an edit and you don't like it, you can always go down to the history in this bottom left hand, or you can just do a simple control Z to undo it. But that looks pretty good to me. So let's go back to fit and let's adjust the duration that this text is on screen. So I'm pulling up so we can have a better view of the timeline window. Highlighted is the new graphic text file that we just created. It automatically just stacked it right on top of this image file that is annotating. But the issue here is that the standard size for files, for graphic files, text files, image files is four seconds. But I want this to be on screen for the entirety that this image is on screen. So I'm going to go back to the selection tool. I'm going to click. I'm going to drag it up to its own video file or video track, excuse me, line here in the timeline view window. Now, if you need more video tracks, just hover here, right click it, and it'll give you the option to add a track or add multiple tracks. So you can click just add a track. Then as you scroll up, you can see that we have an, up to nine video files. So I'm gonna scroll back down. So this, again, this image here is what this citation is for. So I'm going to drag it along, using that red cursor until the end of that image. Again, I did that by just hovering my mouse over the end of the file and it will become a red cursor. Click and hold and you can drag in to shorten or drag out to lengthen the time that an image is on screen, that, a that the graphic file is appearing in your video. So now I've lengthened it out and as I scrub along, you'll see that that graphic file is on screen the entire time that that image is on screen. I can also make it so it appears on and off screen for a shorter length of the image. You can do whatever you need to do, but for my project, this is what I planned for, so I'm going to have it there for the whole time. So now let's repeat the process for the other images that we want to annotate. I'm going to pull up so we can have a tighter view on that timeline window. And I'm, again, I'm going to move the blue cursor to the beginning of the file when I want that text to appear. And I can always pull in to get a more refined view here really get it lined up nicely. That looks good, so let's pull back out. So important, you want to click out, so that way there's no files highlighted. 
The reason why we want to do this is that because we want to create a separate graphic file for each text because it appears on screen at different times. If, a, if this is highlighted and I type something in here, it will just simply add that text to this graphic file. So it'll just be on screen for the duration of this, which isn't necessarily what I want. I want the text to appear with the image. So I'm going to click out of it. So that way Adobe Premiere knows I want to create a different file. Let's repeat the process. We're going to go to the type tool. I'm going to draw an approximate box. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can always edit it. That's the beauty of this. Beautiful. I'm going to go back to my list of already edited and typed out text citations. Click Control V, there it is. Now let's zoom in. I'm going to make this final pro product video a little bit bigger. And now let's zoom in just to double check it. I'm going to scroll down. Okay, it looks good, looks good. Oh, there's a V. Let's get rid of that. And if you're happy with everything, you don't need to do any additional text changes here. Let's go ahead and go back to fit. And let's pull up so we can see the timeline view a little bit more. You can see that same issue. I created a graphic and it comes on the screen when I want it to, but the default is only four seconds long. So again, I'm going to hover my mouse, click on it when I see that red cursor. I'm going to pull it out and end the file with the image file. So that way it corresponds. Now let's scrub along and we can see, okay, there's my citation and it disappears from screen when my image disappears. When I scrub back, we can see that the text comes on screen when the image comes on screen. Perfect. Let's do this one last time. I'm going to move my cursor to the point in the video right there when this last image comes onto screen. And I'm going to go to my selection tool. I'm going to cl click out of this graphic file. I don't want anyone highlighted. You'll know that a file is highlighted because it has that little white ring around it. And we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click outside of it. Just kind of click anywhere. Oh, go away. Perfect. Right there. Great. And then I'm going to pull up. You can see we do have an available file, so we're good to go. And now let's add that file. I'm going to go back to my text type tool, create a box. There we go. Now we have a text box. Going back to my list of edited perfect citations, control copy. Here we go, control V. Excellent. And let's repeat the process again. I'm going to zoom in to double check. Let's find where that text is and let's just double check it. Great. And if there's no additional edits I need to do here, no changes, then we will go ahead and check our work. I'm going to pull up on that timeline video a little bit more so I can see all the files, all the graphics there. And we can see we have the same issue. Oh, first let's go back to fit, great. We have that same issue. It only created a four second file, but we need to be on screen a little bit longer. So let's hover that mouse, click and pull it out so that way it's in alignment with the image that it corresponds to. Great. Now let's, let's just do a quick track. Let's scrub along. Yep, it disappears and the image disappears. And there it is. Great. Clicking back to the selection tool, and I'm going to click back to the editing workspace. That way I'm working with less windows. Just makes it a little bit easier, at least for me, so I don't have as much to look at. I'm going to move the cursor along to before I added any of this text, and let's just double check our work. I'm going to expand the view of this final product window here. Let's hit play. You can see here we have the contemporary and modern dancers. Ah, and we have our first image of Catherine Dunham with her citation. The second image with its citation. And then finally, the third image will pop onto screen. 
we have that image and the correct citation. So this example showed you how to add text for the purpose of adding citations. But again, please be creative in how you add text, the timing of it, how you wanna use it to annotate. You can do so much with this. If you have any questions, please reach out to libraryDH at sdsu.edu. There are also many other Adobe Premiere slide decks, videos, and other resources available to you. So please take the time to check those out. Happy editing.